What is good? We're back. We got Big D Numero Dos. How you doing, buddy? Doing good, man. Ready to get my fishing on. All right. Gonna gonna, gonna find us some uh, find us some good catches, and uh, you know we're gonna go from there. I'm, I might have to do a hat change. I don't know. We'll, we'll oh. see. All right. Something might be coming. Who knows? So. <laughs> All right. So today, uh, like like Big D mentioned, we're gonna do uh, some must draft later round targets and fab and fab uh acquisitions <laughs> top must spend all your money fab acquisitions yeah Some that's fab you lose <laughs> yeah so we're going to kind of go through these that the, the early third round um and then through the fourth round and just you know kind of give guys that are essentially our guys that you maybe you would even trade in to back in a little bit to, to grab some of these guys if if you really like them so uh, I'll start off and I'll kind of go in that vein um, if Tank Bigsby for some reason falls into the third round I'm more than comfortable with trading two that that you know two threes to try to get back into the the third round and grab a guy like Tank Bigsby yeah yeah I agree that's right there with you I think um, you know there's a there's a few of the the Hyatt's, the the Tillmans, they start going yeah. into that middle third. You know, I'm definitely looking, uh, I'm definitely sending some offers. You know, tickling some earlobes, trying to get uh, get back in there. Um, you know, in the in the tight end premiums. You know, once once you get into that fourth round, if you've got like Kraft or um, Shoemaker, uh, <laughs> uh, if you got. Uh, shoot a maker you know going down in there i might even you know i mean two fourths you know for for a shot you know so, something like that to, to for as as far as trade in value trade in targets go i think that uh, i'm all over that we we talked about in the last pod um it, or maybe it's the pod after this who knows it's up to jay wayne you know that's we'll, right world's his oyster but um we talked about like hutchinson and perry you know like um i don't mind trading into the to the fourth round for them but who knows? You know, there could be some fabulous action happening and you can go fishing. So for sure. Um, so I, I agree with with Tillman and Hyatt. If those guys, they'd fall in the same bucket as me for uh, that kind of same trade in the early third. Mm -hmm. And then Chase Brown and Evans are certainly my guys in the third round. Mm -hmm. um, definitely interested in those guys. If they come up, I'm definitely dra getting the opportunity to draft them or moving up. Uh, to get the opportunity to draft them. Uh, after those guys kind of go off the board, it gets a little less exciting for me in the mm -hmm. third. Um, I like, I, I'm fine with taking uh, Schoonmaker, Schoonmaker uh, at the back end of the third there, yep. um, especially tight end premium, uh, good capital, good landing spot, easy pass to targets, uh, which is kind of the underlying theme with most of the rest of these guys on this is that there's a path to early production and then maybe even being the man you know if tank dell starts to fall in that third round I'll, mm -hmm. I'll 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 make something happen so that i could take an opportunity at him i know the waitists out there uh aren't gonna like it but uh he's a technician he's a savage out there you mm -hmm. know we can we can talk coach speak draft speak uh, you know the stroud said that's the guy i want could you go get him now maybe they yeah. were doing that anyway and that's a story but you know still a good vote of confidence uh, for Tank Dell there. And his name's um, Tank, dude. So it's like, right. <laughs> you know, I mean, right there, it, it's going to be hard for him to drop out of the third round. I right. Think. Nathaniel Dell, I don't know if I want yeah, to have right. Tank Dell. Yeah, Gilbert, Gilbert Dell, you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he might be able to pick him up with Fab, but Tank? That's right. No way. Yeah, no chance. No way. Uh, but Chase Brown and Evans are guys that I'm I'm securing in the third if I can. Um, Shoemaker. And then like you touched on, Hutch uh, for me is a – I'll take him if he if he makes it to the second half of the fourth. I'm trading in every single time to take Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. um, you know that that's that's definitely my guy. Kraft, you mentioned him. Puka, you mentioned him. Uh, McBride and Tucker uh, would all be all be guys that in that fourth round are going to be kind of my guys, the guys that I'm targeting. Those are the guys that I want to draft the most. Um, and if any of them hang around. I'm fine with with giving you two fours to get back in there and grab one of those guys and take a shot. I know some people don't like that. They don't like the idea of that. But, you know, I like those guys. I like mostly I like that there is an opportunity to I think, you know, 
any one of those guys could be a third by fucking July if they get right. the right camp buzz and camp love. And oh, he'll be Hutchinson's going to be starting in this position, or Puka is going to be starting, projected as the third wide receiver there, and he's caught everything from uh, Matthew Stafford in you know mini camps or whatever. Right. You, you yeah. know, just yeah. any of the, the. That's why I'm drafting those guys. I'm drafting because right. there's an there's an easy well, one. I'm drafting them for the most part. They have two things line up. I like the path to potent to to potential a uh, role quickly, mm-hmm. and I like the player. I like I like what some of the analytics say. I like what I saw on film. Um, and the other thing is, is a lot of those guys at, have some public awareness to them. It's not mm-hmm. just like a obscure, uh, you know, recreational games monthly. It's you know, it's it's <laughs> right. a name that everybody uh, knows. Where you know Hutchinson now. Over the last, I saw Scott Barrett with a with a blurb, and I I saw somebody else with a blurb. When those bigger names are throwing out those blurbs, all of a sudden the public's antennas go up, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I saw Hutchinson. Oh now if I see another blurb in Hutchinson, now I'm 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 in." I personally yep. really like the game of Hutchinson as well. So those things line up, and guess what? They don't have a sing. Robert Woods is the only real veteran on that core, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. and that this is, goes as well for Tank Dell and as well for Hutchinson. Whereas, you know, those guys could walk right in. Mechie's never played like he's a he's a second year guy, but he hasn't played. He, right. And he's coming back from, you know, an unfortunate circumstance. And, you know, and they have Nico and yeah. and I love Nico. I was drafting Nico all, all last year. I'll continue to draft him. I like what you saw from him, but he's yeah. not a sure thing to be anything at this point. Right. No, you know, no. it's worth the lotto ticket. I mean, that's what, basically what you're saying, right? Is like right. any of those guys can step up and, and be there. Some of them have better profiles than others, but but they're all really decent players. And that's kind of what you're looking for in this, in this later rounds. But, but more specifically, if we, we talk about once the draft ends, you know, what, what, you know, what, what's left on the waiver wire and that, and that's, you know, that's when we become fabulous. That's when, that's when the fishing comes out and that's when we're really starting to look at, okay, what values can I get? Sometimes I'm in the fourth round, maybe in the, towards the end of it, uh, middle of it. Um, There's a few people on there. Maybe I try to trade back, Maybe, you know, know your league, right? Um, mm-hmm. If you use a fab system and you use a fab system for off season and you use a fab system for uh, for regular season, um, one of the things that I like to do is I, I'll trade and maybe try to trade back that fourth and say, hey, why don't you throw me $20 fab to add to that, right? Off season fab, right? Just right. gives you that little bit more ammo. People will be like, what the hell are you doing? What, what does that matter? Magic bucks, you know, like your Chuck E. Cheese tokens. What are you doing with those? But, but then they know come the first waiver wire after your draft, right? And you, right. And you got, you got a little bit extra juice that you can, you can push out there either on some of these, uh, the rookies that didn't get drafted or, or even on on some of the vets, depending on how your you know how your league set up. So, and right, and and to that point is you know to know that it resets is is also it's something big. that you, that mm-hmm. you have to know. And it's just yeah. like you know you can go. I've had plenty of times where I'm sitting there in the back half of the fourth round, and it's like, do I trade in or just do I wait? Is this league you know, especially if it's a league that is maybe a little more home leaguey, and they mm-hmm. don't have quite the depth there they just started doing research in august in the draft three weeks before the draft yeah uh, so they or probably the have of. like two sleepers and if that guy goes <laughs> yeah. or the day of yeah uh, they're not going to get them so you right. know it's always kind of a you know do it should i trade in or not here but but for sure a lot of the times i've been sitting there and it's like as soon as the draft ends i immediately go throw you know last year it was like kyle phillips was mm-hmm. in, in, in leagues where people weren't super up on things kyle phillips and uh and Jordan Mason uh, were, were 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 big pickups for me uh, in in the Fab world last year. So you know, was Jordan Mason super useful this year? Uh, no, and was Kyle Phillips? No, but there was you know buzz and and certain points of those. Pacheco in early drafts probably was a, a Fab guy. You know, right. later drafts in the summer he was probably getting drafted. You know quite a bit earlier but and that's also the cycle that you need to be aware of is that if it's a later draft there's going to be a whole different ranking and tiers here because mm-hmm. some th- th- things have happened um but buzz has yeah. happened people started talking about them people started drafting them so they want to make them <laughs> make them something right and right, they, right they start to, to push that tide up on the on a particular player yeah i think uh, pacheco is a, go- a great example of of somebody who wasn't going drafted um, and or in August may have been going in your fourth round and 
and again, I mean, that's that's pure gold, you know. Um, he he's he's giving you if you didn't trade him, he's giving you points in your lineup, and and he still has potential for trade. Um, you know, I was looking back at um. I think it was 2020, I believe, you know, you had, you know, and, and we're ta- if we're talking super flex, you know, you had like late Jacob Eason and Jake Fromm, which you're like, oh, that sucks. But then you also had late this guy named Jalen Hurts, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you had some late, you know, there's some late stabs and and even um, in, in this world and in, in, in today's day and age, you know, there's there's some quarterbacks like. Um, Clayton, Clayton Toon, right? Right. That's backing up Kyler, you know, that or potentially could be backing up Kyler. You don't, you don't know what's, uh, what's, what's happening there. Um, Aiden O'Connell, you know, who's uh, going to be behind the the gorgeous, you know, Jimmy G's late because of a photo shoot or something. I mean, <laughs> sure. Aiden could be, Aiden could be there. You never know. Yeah. Like, um, and, and so there, there's definitely, um, some strategy there for that. I, you know, those are more of their, your fab plays, right. Where right. I think I, I, possibly jumped ahead so i apologize but th- those are more of your fab plays than than your your, your late fourth i'm not trading in for aiden right. or anything like that but yeah. but hey i'm you know i'll throw a buck or two towards these guys put them on my taxi squad and and when hopefully watch you know um my my silver my silver coin turn into a gold nugget <laughs> sure you know? so sure no i i, I like the uh, i like tune a, a lot that that's a guy either with your late fourths if you want mm-hmm. to talk about some quarterbacks because we threw a, you know we threw the the hutch and the craft and the puka and the mcbride and the tucker and the shoemaker at you mm-hmm. but no quarterbacks really so if it was a quarterback in the late fourth tune and stetson bennett for me would be those guys and you know, also, if they get to the fab section where it doesn't happen, those guys would be priorities uh, for me. But, you right. know, I, yeah. I like I like what Bennett has. And j- just today, there was a blurb about Bennett, how he was throwing fucking rockets, right. um, you know, and, and tune, <laughs> yeah. you know, is probably my favorite shot because the opportunity of, uh, you know, I, I think Colt McCoy had surgery or isn't it maybe isn't healthy. Yeah, I believe um, so. Yep. And, mm-hmm. you know. Kyler's probably not playing week one, most likely. Um, so I don't even know who else is on the roster, but that guy, he's going to probably get a little bit of buzz. And regardless if he's on your team or not, and it, it, you don't even need to, they don't even need to be guys that you not even necessarily just get the third for. Like a lot of these guys can, can help a deal get over the top um, yeah. and just be pieces. And that's almost more the way I view it. Yeah. Of course the flip would be nice, but it's like, you know, I like taking the the tight ends because it's like, in tight end premium that the idea of a tight end is, is usually alluring to somebody um, on the back end of a trade that can push it over the hill. So I think tune and Bennett are both guys uh, that, that would be either late rounds or, or the beginning of my fab budget uh, guys. Um, and we, and we can move kind of into that here. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I would, uh, I would put uh, Elijah Higgins on that uh, fab list because of um you know, again, I like the tight end premium. He was a wide receiver, um, so it's Big D has switched to the uh, to the fishing hat. Yeah, we've uh, gone for, fishing now. We're in the fab, man. We've got a we got we got all kinds of craziness happening. Um, and and I'm right there with you when you when you're talking about the 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 trade up. You know, quarterbacks and tight ends are kind of that position. Your running backs are a little bit different. So, you know, um, somebody like. Um, like the other Kenny that's uh, that's now in now in Seattle, you know, everybody's talking about the oh, the devalue of, of Charbonnet or and the devalue of uh, three sticks. But, you know, McIntosh, um, he's he's passionate. He's he's uh, he's excitable, you know, and he, he could who knows he, he could he could <laughs> yeah. throw some value in and and um, if you can grab him for a couple bucks on the waiver wire and throw him on a taxi squad I mean that's that's a great little fish to have and when maybe he's well, a minnow but maybe he's a whale you never know well, yeah. let's also not pretend that that Seattle has you know hasn't been just picking up warm bodies off the practice squad you know <laughs> yes, mid-season yeah. the last few so you know it, yeah. can, it happens in a hurry with the running backs which is almost mm-hmm. you know the, the the good play here you know they all have their points of, of good play, but running back, it can happen in a hurry, you know, where, yeah. where you're calling up the third guy where you, you took Macintosh and you never knew. So I think, I think that was a good one. Who else you got? Well, and I think we kind of talked about them, but, um, but I just put in a waiver wire uh, for a draft that ended 
couple of days ago. It's like five bucks for Puka. Um, yeah. I know you got him at four twelve in that one QB draft that we were covering. But but uh, you know Puka on the waiver wire. I just I I love the the concept of of him and his path to success. You know, and I don't know if he's one of those chips like you were talking about where you could trade him for something to get something else. You're probably more of waiting for this. Uh, this is a popcorn kernel waiting to pop right sure but sure. but um but I, but I think the pop could be you know could be worth it it could be already uh buttered and salted and delicious you know so yeah. um I, I you know he's 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 somebody that i'm looking at um at the, at the end along with mitchell yeah yeah i you know if, if any of those guys we talked about before were mm-hmm. happened to slide into the in that fourth round happened to slide into fab those would be my immediate prioritized fab guys um right and and if it again if it if your league uh has two different fab systems where it all runs out at, and, then, and then week one it starts again you know blow that blow, blow some fab right off the right. rip and then know that it's going to reset if you want to leave a little bit because of maybe some camp buzz that happens to be able to dip back in i you know that's fine uh, my strategy would just be go mostly right in and then i'll go week one and probably you know manage that fab a little differently in season Potentially, but if it's a deep league, you know, a guy pops up, you might as well blow it all. Yeah. Uh, in, in season. Uh, so, in season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, out, out of season, too. I mean, out of season. Sure. You know, if there's something you really want, I mean, put a little bit higher than you know you need because it's going to reset. Like, it, there's yeah. not a lot of action in the off season, especially if you're in in, um, in leagues that are larger. So if there's somebody that you really like, go after them. And, and then same same concept in the beginning season. I think uh, what's uh, – James Robinson, uh, you know, I believe he was he was undrafted. Um, he was undrafted, obviously, for Jacksonville. Yeah. But but his his value spike as the season went on, as the off season went on, going into the regular season, and then even in the regular season, there was kind of these up and down dips before he moved out and got injured in, in Jacksonville. But but he's a player like that. That's that's kind of the concept there. Um, I think last year, year before, DP, DPJ. Um, People's Jones and and Cleveland kind of had some spike value. I um, mm-hmm. scooped him off of waivers. Yeah, uh, I mean once once the non rookie waivers open up and the, the, all that kind of stuff, there's also some veterans in there, so you don't have to be exclusively on rookies yeah. in that in that That's zone. True. But yeah. mm-hmm. but we're gonna we're gonna stay a little bit on the rookies here. Like right. I said, any of those other guys, those would be my top priority. Shorter uh, went to Buffalo. The receiver was a five star recruit. Uh, he he would be at the top of my uh one of my fab lists here if i if i got to that point he's a big big body receiver he gets the landing spot in buffalo there's a lot of uncertainty there who the second right. and third guy is i mean we think this, the second guy hopefully is going to turn into kincaid uh but you know there is still an opening there in a fun offense so shorter would be a guy at perry would be a guy uh, perry, for me yeah. if, we're, if we're sticking with the wide receivers if he doesn't go mm-hmm. um, do, do you have any um wide receivers that you that you like um, well, I kind of talked about Puka. You know, I do like mm-hmm. A.T. Perry. Um, I don't think he's going to get out of there, but Hutchinson, you know, is definitely mm-hmm. <laughs> definitely somebody that I'm spending high sure. fab on. If he, if, yes. he, if yes. I can't trade in and he gets out, I'm, I'm definitely going there. Wilson in uh, Arizona, Mike, I think mm-hmm. Michael Wilson, right? Right. Like, you know, even a player like that, I, I you know, I think value-wise – who knows what's up with Hopkins? You know, he's coming back. He's not coming back. He's coming back. He's not coming back. You know, there's there's opportunity there. Um, so, you know, that that's somebody that I, I may look yeah. at a little bit, um, you know. Uh, and again, some of these I'd pay, you know, I'd, I'd spend good fab on, whether it's uh, reset fab or or year year long fab. Right? Sure. Um, and, and then some of them I would. If I don't win them, I'm not, you know, not, right. not going to cry in my beer or anything like that. But, you know, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if nobody else is on the list, um, I like Grant Debose and uh, Wicks. Mm. He landed in Green Bay, uh, but those would be lower fab guys for me for the most part. Unless nobody else was out there and it's a big league pick clean, then obviously you need to adjust. And you know, guys like Debose and um, Isaiah Winstead, who just went to the Niners, who was the had did all the tape on Twitter by himself and uh, big measurables, quick guy, and the Niners just picked him up, practice squad guy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he, he's interesting. I've seen Mallory out there a little bit, another tight end. Kuntz, obviously, 
big athletic score. So those aren't those guys with athletic profiles aren't the worst guys to to stab yeah. on in these situations. A because of the athletic profile. B because of where we're at in fantasy, where those guys certainly get a lot more glory, glory and seem to, you know, can can gain steam in a hurry if there's any opportunity. Well, look at this picture on player profile or how athletic this motherfucker is, and all right. of a sudden, you know, uh, that'll get kind of circled around. Um, well, I'm also looking at the like you were just saying like the landing spot where where they're at what's the coaching staff look like you know right. so like somebody like parker washington who landed in sure. jacksonville you know who's with trevor lawrence who's with um you know a coaching staff that that seems to know how to not just coach but also kind of develop and kind of play right. up their players you know yeah and and i mean um you know he's somebody that you know i know i know everybody is really excited about calvin ridley and i'm not saying i'm not and i wish him all the best but he hasn't played football in two years who knows what he's going to look right. like you know there there could be opportunities opportunity there um you know uh i know i know well, there's some and, decent and, talent there but yeah and they're a little older too it's not like they're sure. the youngest they won't you be know, there forever. I mean, kirk will we think would be got paid a lot and zay got paid a decent amount too but mm-hmm. uh, zay not super young ridley not super young mm-hmm. um yeah you know so we don't we don't exactly know what that core is going to look like so i like that kind of stab and that kind of view, you know thousand foot view on the approach of uh, the staff and one, is it a team that people get excited about like the green Bay Packers? So that's Wicks, uh, Wicks, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, but, and, and they've been, you know, Pittsburgh or green Bay have have done good jobs of developing a a rapport for being kind of people who understand how to draft receivers. Now, whether it's necessarily true or not, it doesn't matter. The the public opinion uh, has decided. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, (laughs) yeah. I, I like I like that. Hayner would be a quarterback. That would be uh, a guy I would take a shot on. He he signed with uh, New Orleans, and you know it's Carr. They got Carr. Uh, right. if, if God forbid anything happens to him, and you know he's he f- seems to be a guy who you know could fall out of favor for whatever reason. Maybe it's not. Maybe he's you know maybe he's there for as long as Drew Brees was. Right. Um, but you know Hayner is a, a good shot in a super flex situation, and then. Uh, to throw some running backs at you, uh, Tyon Evans, and then uh, Cameron Peoples uh, was from App State, and he signed at Carolina, I believe, and could give them something different than what they have. And I, I like them at App State. He had he had some some really good games. Uh, obviously, playing at a little bit lower level, but he's a, a bit more of a of a of a hard nosed runner, but can still pop pop a big play. And you know that's kind of different from what Chuba and Miles Sanders offer and i could see you know if he could make the team maybe maybe it's it's blackshear has been there so maybe the advantages to him but just as another running back to uh to take a shot on and then chris rodriguez if he hangs around it seems like he he's been he got a little praise recently yeah. um so any any thoughts of of some other guys or angles that you like here yeah i think you covered most of what i was thinking in the in the running back world you know again just kind of looking and taking some stabs at that the opportunity and it depends on your bench and your setup and and what you can spend but um i think another wide receiver that i was um uh i don't i don't recall if we mentioned it so you can stop me if we did did we talk about trey palmer Nope, nope. So I, I like Trey Palmer, um, not for this season, but for next season, right? We're playing Dynasty, and you look at um, Evans, and you look at Godwin, and Gage is there as their three. Um, uh, you know, I think he's has the ability to learn from some great wide receivers that are veterans that potentially next next year he could have, you know, um, a, a full clear opportunity with some game time under him to kind of establish a spot there in, in um, Tampa Bay. So, um, so he, he's another wide receiver. And when I'm looking, that's what I kind of do when I'm looking for wide receiver stabs is I'm not just looking at the player. He's a decent player, but I'm not just looking at the player. I'm also kind of looking at what opportunity is around him and what kind of coaching staff can help, help him. Right. Uh, and if the coaching staff isn't quite there, what players are there? Cause I think, that kind of goes unnoticed sometimes, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of coach, there's a lot of coaching in, in, in the, in the wide receiver rooms and the running back rooms from the veterans, like talking and watching the game film and then talking about what they're doing and, and players develop that way as well. You know, they, they see it and they feel it sure. and they, they breathe, uh, you know, and if you're around some excellence and I, I think Godwin and, and Evans are just, they're great wide receivers, you know, right. like, and so if, if he can pick up, you know, 
15, 20 percent of the knowledge base that they have, you know, he could be a solid wide receiver three and 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 have potential to grow. So, yeah, no, I, I think that's a really good a really good call. I don't see him a whole lot. And some people were kind of putting him in as like a discount at a, or a discount high at, at, at points. Yeah. Um, so a lot of speed there. And also, you know, kind of in that same vein of Fab's, you know, he, he could be a splashy type of player, too, because he does have that kind of top end speed that takes the top off the defense of, you know, mm-hmm. they kind of had uh, who, who was the guy there for a minute? Who Scotty Miller, Scotty, Scotty Miller, Miller was kind of yeah. that Scotty. He, he had, Scotty had some buzz though. Scotty, Scotty yeah. had some worth. Scotty was probably of late fourth round fab guy. Um, yeah. You know, if he got out and then he was a late fourth round fab guy, but he was also in season. He was, he was a trade candidate for the, what right. you were talking about earlier about right. doing some tier trading and doing some step up trading. Like he was having some game value there that put him on the map more than what he, what he was worth in the off season. So, yeah, I think, you know, Trey Tucker would be another one of those. And then uh, Tyler Scott to the bears, pretty good capital on him. Third round guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Got good speed out of Cincinnati, and that core is, you know, maybe not quite wide open this year. Um, but you know, Claypool, I believe, is only there for one more year. We'll see kind of what happens. Uh, obviously, DJ Moore has probably locked that down for a while, but Mooney's probably nearing the end of his tenure there, and I think he probably would, you know, be okay with getting out of there. Um, and they're probably mm-hmm. fine with, you know, I think Mooney's a good player, uh, but maybe Tyler Scott could could fill that role kind of for them. Um, so I think that would be a, 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 a nice, uh, fab pickup. Um, yep. and we mentioned, uh, Trey, Trey Tucker there. Uh, so, uh, Ronnie Bell, another one for the Niners. Um, you know, mm-hmm. we don't exactly know what's going to happen with Ayuk moving forward. Um, so, you know, that, that core could be, you know, they they may be looking for another two here relatively soon. I'm not saying that it's going to be Ronnie Bell, uh, but, no. But, but um, the potential again, the coaching, the players, right. the what do you, the, the where they're land, where where they have landed, and what they're going to learn, you know, um, I think is important. Did, did we talk about in the quarterback Sean Clifford? No, <laughs> <laughs> I, we can't go off without talking about a Penn State guy, right? Like, oh uh, God! Um, if I just hope if, somebody else spends that cash on Clifford. I I, I do too, but I, I the the one thing I will say is um, I'm not. I've, I've been on record of not being a huge love fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that they brought back, um, uh, da, 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 what's his name? Danny something as the backup to love, you know, like um, they, they may bring in a, a veteran or something like that. But, but again, you know, if, if, if he's out there, um, you know, and, and something happens, you know, he, he could be a, like, if I'm the love owner, I don't think I wouldn't mind putting a dollar. You may not even have to put a dollar on him, but you, you know, putting a dollar and put him on my taxi squad, just, yeah. just in case type of type of situation. So Danny Etling, Etling. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was um, a fun name. And circling back to Trey Palmer real quick. I mean, yeah. you could also end up with Caleb Williams, May Penix over there, you know, next year where it went from, Baker, who, you know, maybe he revives himself, but, you know, it, probably not. It, and it, they could be a bad team and yeah. in a hurry have a really interesting quarterback situation where uh, people are are excited about, you know, whoever. Uh, so, mm-hmm. all right. Anything else you want to hit on before we get out of here? No, I think we I, th- I think we started fishing in the deep there, man. So I think, yeah. I think we're good. So, yeah, as long as, you know. Maybe you can find the one that has extra lead in there and we can, you know, hit the scales and really, really cash in at the tournament. That's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You never know. You never know. Um, all right, man. Well, Big D, good uh, episode dose. Uh, appreciate you. We appreciate all you guys out there. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below. We got the Patreon $5 holler where we're doing uh got a discourse and we're we're doing mock drafts and and we're we're really close to our own adp but we had a little glitch in the matrix uh with the guy who was building that did uh did a little bit of something wrong got a couple things confused uh so so soon very soon we'll have our own little it's coming out but even before that man the discord is is hopping we got some bright bright minds in there we and we got a lot of new people that have that have hopped in and have really added some value and we'd love to we'd love to chat and talk with you and and see you there so yeah come on in the water's warm come on in and and we appreciate y'all and if you're not feeling that just just give us a five-star review or you can go to revelrybrewingco.com support the team with a uh with the i got the exclusive tea somewhere wrong side 
can't really see it uh, <laughs> but Mike. there's yeah. a there's a tee there that if you, you know you could buy that and and support the team and, and get some fly gear all, all at the same time so once again we appreciate you and we'll see you soon peace later <laughs>